York City, the high school dro dropout rate in the community where I work, it's close to 80 percent. One of the biggest things that we see now is that we have all these young girls, specifically the young girls who are getting pregnant at 12, 13, 14 years old, usually by much older men, 25, 26 year old, who provide, um, who for the young women, they think they provide a stable environment because they have an apartment or because they have a nice car or because they have things that they do not have. But what happens is that this person, this man is with them for just a few months. Usually they're not there until the baby is born. So we have an alternative high school where young people are able to bring their children in and we have a daycare for them. And one of the biggest things that we try to work at is trying for that teenager when she has a first child or he has his first child not to have another child until that person is able to um, go to school, finish their high school, get a trade, go to college so that can, they're able to support and create a better living for themselves. My name is Margaret Aihunu from the Solomon Islands. And I came here uh, to represent the Soroptimist International of the South Pacific. I got a big family with five brothers and six sisters. I was able to be the lucky one to be educated in a church school uh, that belongs to the Church of England. And it was a privilege for me that I was taken by the missionaries to school and I was cared for and beside that my father was able to help me to pay all my necessities to go to school. Though he was not educated, he saw that it was important for me to go to school. So I went to the primary school and then went to a high school and then I went to a college where I was trained to become a teacher. In my country, not every parents go to school and not all parents have jobs. So I got Loretta who goes to um, King George the High School, which I am paying her school fees with everything else that she ha is expected to have at school. Now, I have been uh, paying school fees for another girl who has already left school and she is to train to become a computer. So I'm actually sponsoring two girls in my country and I feel that I have to help my, the, the women of tomorrow to be educated and especially in getting a job. My name is Chang, you know, Z-H-A-N-G, Chang Chang Xia. It's so very difficult for, uh, for you people. So I work in uh, Chungshan University. You know, so I'm a chemist. I'm a chemist and can work in the chemistry department. And I'm also involved in the environmental science also. I'm the director of the Environmental Science and Engineering Research Center girls have uh, given every opportunity to be educated. After the graduation, the government will give them, uh, I mean, they will allocate the jobs for them. Oh, of course, you can go to the government's, uh, uh, they, they can give you jobs, but if you want to choose for yourself, it's, they, they, they have less chance than the, than the boys, you know. They, they will think that the, when the boys come, I mean, when the, when the girls, they will have uh, marriage, pregnancy, and children. So they, they would rather, you know, those private company, they would rather have boys, uh, that this is a problem. <laughs> yeah, I think in America you have this also. We think it's very necessary to change the whole structure of the working world to make it more women and, and, and mother and family friendly. 
and basically the working world is, is organized around a male way of life. Um, the, go, go, going to work eight hours a day and then coming home and having someone else take care of, of the rest of, of uh, uh, private life or private work is a, is a male way. And these others are usually women. It's either your wife or it's your grandmother or it's your, uh, your nanny. It's, it's a woman. There's an